Jaden and Zion. All right. Father God, we just come to you tonight just give you all the praise and all the glory, Father God. Father God, we just thank you for who you are, Father God. We thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father God. We thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives, Lord Jesus. We just come to you tonight just giving you all the praise, Father God. Yes, Lord. Thank you for wrapping your arms around us today as we went to work, Father God, as we went out in this world, Father God. With your head, your protection of our lives, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. We just thank you for everything that you're doing for us, Father God. Father God, we just thank you for the word that we're going to get tonight, Father God, that it can be instilled in us, Father God, so we can just read your word, Father God, and keep um, our minds and our hearts focused on you, Father God, so we can stay balanced in you, Father God. And we just thank you, Father God, for who you are, Lord Jesus. We just want to be obedient servants for you, Father God, let our eyes in our ears just be touched by you, Father God, so we can just worship you, Father God, and everything that you're doing in our lives, Father God. Yes, Lord. And we just thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father God. And we give you praise, Lord Jesus, <laughs> excuse me, for everything that you're doing in our lives, Lord Jesus. We just want to be obedient servants for you, Father God. We just want to worship you and just gather in your spirit, Father God. We just thank you, Father God, for his word ministry, Father God. We just thank you for letting the apostle bring the word. Who bring the word? Oh, Alpha, Minister Alpha bringing the word tonight so we can learn, Father God, what thus said the Lord, Father God, and so it can be instilled in us, Father God. And we just thank you, Lord Jesus, and we just give you honor and praise for everything that you're doing for us, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We honor you, Father God. We magnify your holy name, Lord Jesus. Father God, we just bind up all fear, Father God, for anybody that's fearful to come out. Lord Jesus, and to just hear the word, Father God. Father God, we just thank you for everybody that's on the line and everybody that's watching, Lord God, so you can just protect us, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you for everything that you're doing in our lives, Father God. We honor you, Lord God. We thank you, Father God. Father God, we just pray for our kids, Father God, that their minds and their hearts will be focused on you, Lord Jesus. We just thank you, Father God. Just, um, Put a hedge of protection over our kids' lives, Father God, over their minds and their hearts, Father God. We just thank you and we honor you, Lord Jesus. We honor you, Father God. We thank you, Father God. We just um, want to stay in your will and your way, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. We want to um, just stay in your will and your way, Father God. We just want to keep telling you that we love you, Father God, and we honor you, Lord Jesus. We honor you, Father God. In your precious Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Amen, amen. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank God for uh, Sister Tequila for intercession. We're going to go straight forward uh, with Bible study tonight. Good evening, everyone. Those that are joined in with us online, uh, with a conference call, and those that may be tuning in uh, via video. So tonight, if you would, if you would go with me to Romans 4, I'm going to be reading out of the message translation so mine may read a little different from yours but i want you to go with me tonight to romans uh, chapter 4 and i'm going to start at um verse 8 17. tonight i want to kind of um tonight i want to talk on the topic or teach on the topic don't lose or let go of your hope in this season so if you would go with wrong go to romans 4 chapter 4 verse 17 and as I said, I'm reading out the message, so it, it will read uh, slightly different from what the King James Version reads. So in Romans 4, 17, it says, We call Abraham father, not because he got God's attention by living like a saint, but because God made something out of Abraham when he was, when he was a nobody. Isn't that what we've always read in scripture? God saying to Abraham, I set you up as the father of many people. That's what the message version is reading. Abraham was the Abraham was first named father and then became the father because he dared to trust God to do what God called him to do. So today, 
I want to bring about, I want to mention, and I want to teach on, in this season, there's a lot of things going on, and we're hearing a lot of things in the media, we're seeing a lot of things, but don't let that cause you to lose hope. The saints, saints, we need to stay encouraged, we need to be encouraged through the word of God, and how many, many, many of us know that Abraham was the father of faith, so we got to keep our faith in this season. And in, in the verse it says, it said, Abraham kept hoping. He kept his hope. Not only just hope, he kept hope, but he kept believing. Believing and hoping is all tied and it's all in the, one and the same. He dared, it said he dared to trust God. And that's where you and I need to be. We got to be in a place where we're keeping our hope. Don't lose hope. Don't feel hopeless. Don't go the word of God encourages us and tells us to walk by faith and not by sight. We can't be moved by what we see. We can't be moved by what the chatter is, the um, what the media is saying. So I want to encourage us tonight to not lose hope because Abraham did not give up hope on what God had promised him. Um, I'm going to go on and read and it says, it says here that, Abraham was first named father and then became a father because he dared to trust God, to do what God could, to do what God could do. He dared to trust God. And that's got to be you and I. We got to have a trust like never before in this season. This is not the season for us to lose faith and not have trust and wavering in our faith. It also says, here it says, um, Raise the dead to life with a word by make by something by make with a word make something out of nothing. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway. Amen. This is there's so much going on in the world right now, and so many people could probably be swayed from left to right. And the word of God tells us, be not t children talk to and fro with every wind of doctrine. So that's why it's so imp important that you and I be as like be as Abraham was. He believed, he continued to believe what God promised him. He continued to believe, he stood on, he stood on what God had promised him and told him. So you and I have to be that same, uh, do the same thing. So it says here, it says, raise the dead to life with a word make something out of nothing and when everything was hopeless see right now it may seem to someone it it may seem hopeless to so, someone right now that's especially that's not sure what the word of god says especially that that is not sure of the promise of god they may feel hopeless they may feel that it do they may feel like it's doomsday and that there's no hope but how many of you know that it is that is there is still hope abraham continues to hope Abraham kept hoping. Abraham kept believing. He dared to trust God. And this is the same thing that you and I must do in this time and this season that we're in. Even during a pandemic, even during the coronavirus, I know, many, I know that um, the government has said that we can go back out and, you know, the, the governor, Ivan, said it. But how many know you still got to have hope? You still got to believe God. You still got to take God at his word. You still got to have trust in God. You can't allow, don't lose your hope in this season. Don't feel like that there's no hope because Abraham believed. He kept hoping. He kept believing. And, and, and you and like I said, you and I must do the same thing. We got to be just as Abraham was. Keep believing and hoping. And not only, so what Abraham was hoping in, and that's what I want to get to. What was he hoping and believing in? It says here, Abraham believed anyway. Deciding to live not on the basis of what he saw. As I mentioned, we can't be moved by what we see. We can't be moved by what we see, amen? The media is just playing so many things. We're hearing so many things on the radio. We're hearing so many things coming from different places. And even on a job, our jobs are saying this. Our The companies we're working for, they're saying this. But how many of you know we cannot let that move us? We cannot let that cause us to lose hope. So Abraham believed anyway, and that's how we have to, we have to continue to believe the word of God, deciding to live not on the basis of what, it says he decided to not, he decided not to live on the basis of what he saw. And that's, that's have to be, that has to be you and I, can't be moved by what we see, we can't be moved by um, 
everybody, what everybody is saying, oh, this is going to happen, or this, uh-uh, I got to keep my hope. I got to have hope in God. I got to have hope in what God is saying, what God's word has promised me. And so it says he could he couldn't do but on what God said he would do. Abraham believed anyway, decided to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. So that what that is that there is what Abraham was hoping in. His hope he was hoping on, he was continuing to hope, continue to believe what God had promised him, what God said he would do, and what God said he would do, uh, what he will, what, that he would be a father of many people. So it says, and he said, and so he was made father of a multitude of people. God himself, God himself said to him, you're going to have a big family. God said it. God said, um, God has said, given us so many promises, promises in his word, and we have to stand on those promises, amen? We have to continue to remind ourselves of what, the, of what God has said to us in his word, what he has promised us in his word. So just as Abraham was focused on what God said, he didn't waver, he, he didn't lose hope, he kept hope in what God, he kept hope in believing in what God told him, and that he would be the father of many nations, the father of many people. What is God, what has God told you? What God, what has God promised you? Have you reminded yourself, have you refreshed yourself on the promise of God? In this season, everybody should know what God has promised in his word. We should not be lacking or contemplating where well, it, you know, I hear a lot of people say oftentimes they use this term where they, if it be the Lord's will. No, we should not be using that word, if. Amen? We should know for sure. We should be fully persuaded. We should be fully assured that God said this in his word and he has promised this to me just as he promised Abraham. So I want to go up. Let's go back up. I want to go up to uh, 13. Let's look at verses 13 through 15. And as I mentioned, I'm reading it out of the message, so it reads a little different. So God promised Abraham to be that he would be the uh, the father of many nations. And Abraham believed that Abraham hope, continued hoping and believing that it would come to pass, that it would be fulfilled. And how, how many you know it, it was? So in verse 13, it reads from the message, it says that famous promise. That was a famous promise Abraham received from God. It says that famous promise God gave Abraham that he and his children would possess the earth. Not only God, God promised Abraham and his children that they would possess the earth. The word of God says the earth is his and the fullness thereof. If God said it, don't you know it's going to happen? It's going to manifest? So he, it said that this was a famous promise. A famous promise. God gave Abraham that he and his children would possess the earth and was not given because was not given because of something Abraham did. It's not based on and this season don't be don't be trying to do a whole bunch of things as if oh uh, I'm uh, the promise is gonna come about in my uh and what I'm doing. No, you got to believe. You have to trust God. You have to believe that He's gonna bring it to pass. So it says uh, was not given because of something Abraham did or would do. It was based on God's decision to put everything together for him. How many of you believe that God's going to put everything back together for us in this season? Even during this pandemic, God is working this thing out for us, working this thing out for the saints, for the believers. He's, gonna put, he's putting it back together. He's putting it back together just as he did for Abraham. He said he put he put everything together for him. And that is the promise. So you have to uh, continue to hope and know that everything is still working out for our good. And it's God is putting everything together for us. Which and it says here, which Abraham did enter when he believed. So you gotta believe. Don't lose hope. Continue to have hope in what God is and saying it through his word. Be encouraged through the word of God. Meditate on the promises of God. Know what he has promised us so that you can put him in back and put him back 
and remembrance of what he promised. And so you have to continue to encourage yourself. Lord, you promised me this. This is what you said in your word. So it says here, it was based on God's decision to put everything together for him, which Abraham did enter when he believed. If those who if those who get what God gives them only get it by doing everything they were told to do and filling out all the right forms properly signed, that eliminates personal trust. In this season, we, we, sh we, we, we should not, our, trust, our personal trust in God should not be eliminated. It should be stronger like never before. Our trust should be at another level. We should trust God like we've never trusted him before in this season. Amen? So it says um, his, that eliminates personal trust completely and turns the promise into an ironclad contract. That's not a holy promise. That's a business deal. This is what the message is saying. That is a business deal. A contract drawn up by a hard-nosed lawyer, lawyer and with plenty of fine print, only make sure that you will never be able to collect. But if there is no contract in the first place, simply a promise. Apostle has been teaching this month, uh, month of May. He, God gave him a phrase. He, God gave him a phrase, yes, you may, for the month of May. So if we go to God asking for whatever it is that we're asking, God, the word of God already says, he said, for this month, yes, you may. I'm saying that it, you, you, can, you can possess it. I'm, I'm saying it's yours. But I don't want you to lose hope. And I don't want you to worry. So I'm going to go on in this verse. It says, but if, there, but if there's no contract in the first place, simply a promise. And God's promise at that, you can't break it. God is not, the word of God tells us he is not slack concerning his promises. He is not slack concerning his promise. So, saints, don't lose hope because God is going to put everything back together for us. Even during this time, in 2020, in a pandemic, we know that the base word of pandemic is to panic. Many people are still panicking, and you wouldn't believe it. Uh, they're still panicking every time they hear something new on the news. But you don't lose your hope. Don't you panic. Don't you join in with them. Because God is putting stuff back together for us. As Apostle even said on Monday, God is redeeming the time. He's redeeming the time. So don't lose your hope. Don't let go of your hope. Don't, don't, and, and it's important that you know who your hope lies within. Who, who is our hope? The word of God tells us Jesus Christ is our hope of glory. 16, it says, this is why the fulfillment of God's promise depends entirely on trusting God. The, the fulfillment of the promise, the manifestation of the promise, it coming to pass in this season. It's, 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 it, depends, it depends entirely on, your tr on you trusting God. Are you truly trusting God? Are you believing God? Are you are you, are you uh, reminded of what he's promised us in his word? It says this is why the fulfillment of God's promise de depends entirely on trusting God in his way. And then simply embracing him and what he does. God's promise arrives as a pure gift. Amen? God is, prom God is not slack concerning his promise. The word of God tells us the promises of God are yes and amen. It goes right in line with what the apostle is preaching, uh, uh, this, uh, the series he's preaching for the month of May. Yes, you may. He said, yes, you may. If we ask, we will have it. And Abraham didn't even ask. God had already told him that this is, a, this is what I'm setting up for you. I'm setting you up for this. This is a famous promise that you will be the father of many nations. And he, Abraham kept hoping in that thing. He didn't let go of what God told him. He continued to believe despite what was going on around him. Despite of him, uh, others may be, you know, others feeling hopeless. So how many, you know, if others around you, those that when you go on your job and they feel despair and they feel down, don't you get in with that. You encourage them, but how are you going to encourage them? You got to encourage them with the word of God. You got to know what God says. 
we got to tell them what God promised us this. So stay encouraged. Don't lose hope. And that's why I encourage everyone today. Don't lose hope in this season. Don't let go of your hope. Believe. Believe like never before. Trust as Abraham did. He trusts in, he trusts in God. And so it says here, um, it says then he simply embraced it. Embrace it. How many of you, we got to embrace it, even though we're in this right now, but we're still embracing God. We're, we're still embracing the word of God. And so it says, and what he does, and what God is doing, God's promise arrives as a pure gift. That, that's the only way everyone can be sure to get in on it. Those who keep the religious traditions, those who have never heard of them, for Abraham, the father of us all, he is not our uh he is not our racial father. That's the reading the story. That's reading the story backwards. He is our father, our father of faith. He is our faith father. So I want us to be encouraged um, to keep the faith, just as Abraham did. He was the father of faith, and we are, and we're. We are sons and daughters. We have been adopted into the beloved. We got that be sons and daughters of faith. We got to keep our hope, amen? So, um, if let's go down. I want to drop down. God is, God is going to bring us out of this, and we got to pretend to know that God promised we will come out of this. He's putting it all together. He's redeeming the time. He's already given us answers before we even ask. He's saying, I said, yes, you may. He's saying that his word, is our, his word tells us, that he's not slack concerning his promise for the word of God. For, uh, the word of God says that many count slack. Some people are counting slack right now. Amen. They're saying I don't have. They're saying I don't have this. They saying I'm lacking in this area. So they're saying, oh, it's taking too long. What well, we ain't got. God is working this thing out for you and I. He's, the promise would still be uh, come to pass. It will still come to fruition. It will still come. Um, to fulfill, it will be fulfilled just as it was for Abraham. So in verse 19, I'm going to drop down to verse 19. It says, Abraham didn't focus on impulses and say it's hopeless. Don't, don't shift your focus in this season. You got to stay focused. We got to continue to look unto the hills from which cometh our help. We got to continue to focus on the word of God. We got to so it, just as Abraham did, he didn't he didn't shift his focus. Don't let your focus be shifted to things like distract things that come to distract you. Because there are some things that are gonna come to distract you. Distract you. There are some people that are on assignment. They want you to jump on the bandwagon with them and and, and be uh, down and be and have a pity party or feel hopeless. Don't you get on that wagon? Don't you be encouraged? So I want to. So it says, is this hundred year old body, this is what Abraham was saying. This hundred year old body could never father a child, nor did he survey Sarah's decades of infertility and give up. He didn't tiptoe, this is what I really wanted to get to. It says, he didn't tiptoe around God's promise, asking cautiously skeptical questions. We can't tiptoe around the promises of God. We got to know what God has promised us. That means that when you when they, when they they put that word in there, tiptoeing, that means you're not really sure. So the saints, we got to be sure what God has promised us. We can't dance around the promises of God. We can't hit and miss and say, well, like I said before, a lot of people like to use this term, if it be the Lord's will. No, it ain't ill. The God's will is his word. So if his word says it's his will, right? right. Amen. So don't tiptoe. We don't have to dance and tiptoe around the promises of God. It said he, Abraham didn't tiptoe around God's promises, asking cautiously. The word of God says that um, we have not because we ask not or because we ask amiss. No, I'm asking because I, you said that I, I can have it. Your word says that I can have this. Your word validate. I put if you're gonna ask, put the word with it. Amen. The, the word, he, the word of God tells us that He watch over His word to perform, and His word is not gonna return unto Him void. He's not slack concerning His promise. He's gonna do what His word says. So put the word on Him when you ask Him, and then, and He's already given us the answer. Yes, you may. My my promises are yes and amen. 
You can have that, but don't tiptoe around it. Know what God has promised you. Know that it's yours. You can access it. It belongs. It's sitting there waiting for us. There's some, there's some things that are still sitting there waiting for us, but have we spoken and released it? Have we spoken to that? You belong to me. It's, there's things that got Elder Brown name on. There's things that got Apostle name on it, uh, Tequila name on and I and, and don't you want what belongs to you? Amen. So yeah. I, you got to keep hope and believing that it's gonna come to pass, even though a lot of things may be going on and there's a lot of things that are being said in the media. But don't get in with that. Don't don't let that change your hope. Don't don't, don't let don't allow that to cause you to lose hope in this season. So we gotta continue to have hope just as Abraham did. So don't tiptoe around the promises. Don't tiptoe around asking. Ask, because you know that's what God's word says. You can have it. It says he plunged himself. It said he plunged into the promise and came up strong, ready for God, sure that God would make good on what he said. God's going to make good on what he said. You can take it to the bank. It's not going to come back return. It ain't going to be voided. It ain't going to be insufficient. We serve a God that's sufficient. He's not lacking in any area. You can. You don't have to be. You don't have to uh, be like if someone wrote you a check for something. You're like, I'm scared to put this in my bank account. It may cause my bank account to go in the negative. No, you can take it to the bank with God because God's word has promised us. He just as He promised Abraham. He told Abraham. He said to Abraham that you will be the father of many nations, and it came to pass. It's gonna come to pass for you and I. And we got to be just as Abraham was, hoping. He kept hope. He kept. He kept believing. Amen. So I'm going on. I may not get to any other the other verses that I have. Where my time is. And it says, and it says here. It went on to say. It says the same thing. No, it says here. But it it's not just Abraham. It's also us. The same thing gets said about us when we embrace and believe the one who brought Jesus to life. When the conditions were equally hopeless. Our conditions may seem hopeless, but it's not. The sacrifice Jesus made us fit for God just set us right with God. So we're, we're set right with God. God said, these are my sons and daughters. I'm working this out. I'm going to redeem the time. I'm putting all, putting things back together for them. Amen. And that's what you, we, we all, you and I have to be encouraged to know that. Go to Ephesians 1 and 18. I, I, I may get to the other verse that I want to look at. Ephesians 1. Um. I'm, I'm going to start reading at verse 15. And I'm still in the message. But don't be saints that's tiptoeing tip around the promise. Be fully assured and fully persuaded and know what God has promised you. Don't join in with people that are saying, if it be the Lord's will, well, I don't know what's going to happen in this season. We don't know. We just... And sitting around looking and wondering what's going, how this going to turn. No, God is telling us what he's doing. Amen? Verse 15, I'm starting in verse 15. I'm in Ephesians 1 and I'm going to read from verse 15 on down. It's in the message. It says, that's why when I heard of the solid trust you have in the Master Jesus and your outpouring of love to all the followers of Jesus, I can stop thanking God for you. Every time I pray, I think of you and give thanks. But I do more than thanks. I ask. We gotta ask. I ask and ask the God of our Master Jesus Christ, the God of glory, to make you intelligent and discerning and knowing him personally. That We got to have a personal relationship with him in this time, in this season. You can't be like tiptoeing or pretending, it's time out for pretending. You got to actually have a personal relationship with God. Amen. 
You got to know him. You got to have us, it said, to make you intelligent. We got to be intelligent believers. We got to know what the word of God says. We got to be discerning believers. We got to discern. We got to be able to discern. It says discerning and knowing him personally. Your eyes focused and clear. We got to have, we got to be focused. Don't lose, don't have your focus off in this season. You need to be focused on the word of God. Focus on what God is saying. What God, what are you saying to the church? What's next? Show us what's next. It says your eyes focus and clear so that you can see exactly what he is calling you to do. God is calling us to do something. And that we can't be at home twiddling our fingers. Uh, I think the apostles mentioned it too, binge washing. We, we got to have a prayer life. We got to know what God has promised us. We got to continue to speak to this thing. We have power, and God has given us power to speak a thing. We can speak to this pandemic. We can speak to the coronavirus. We can speak that it died. We can speak that the church, people be saved, and people come to know Christ. We have that power to possess. So I'm going to continue to go on because I, I want to get to this other verse, and I may not be able to get to it. But it says, so that you can see exactly what he is calling you to do. Grips, grasp the in, uh, in, in this, in this of the glorious way of life he has for his followers. All the utter extra bent vengeance of his work in us who trust him. Endless, endless energy, boundless strength. All this energy issues from Christ. God raised him from the dead and set him on a throne in deep heaven in charge of running the universe. Everything from galaxies to government. God is over the galaxies Hallelujah. and the government. Amen? Amen. We got a God that said, I'm, I'm putting this all together from the galaxies to the government. Don't, don't lose hope. I got you. I'm working it out for you. No name and no power exempt from his rule and not just for the time being, but forever. He is in charge of it all. God is in charge of this all. Amen. He's in charge of all. He's over the pandemic. He's over the government, as it said, the galaxies. Look, he's over the, he got this. He's, over, he's in charge of it all. And it says, and he has the final word. Amen. He has the final word. So don't, be, don't, don't get caught up in well. God has the final say. And we and and, and, he, and it's gonna come to pass. It's gonna manifest. He has the final word on everything, on everything. And then it goes on to say, at the center of it all, this Christ rules the church. The church you see is not peripheral to the world, but the world is peripheral to the church. Come on, Amen. Amen. What the church? The church is over. It's at the church. Right. Not the world subject to the church, not the church subject to the world, but we, it says the church. The world is perfect to the church. That's what it says. And then it says the church is Christ's body in which he speaks and acts. God is saying uh, something uh, by which he fills everything with his presence. And um, this last verse, and y'all can read it, I'm, just, I'm not going to go, it's Colossians 1 and 20, uh, Colossians 1 verse 27. Jesus Christ is our hope of glory. Who is your hope of glory? The word of God says, be ye ready to give an answer to anyone who asks of the hope of glory their lives within you. Who is your hope of glory? Jesus Christ is our hope of glory. So we're believing and we're hoping that God, Jesus is working this thing out. God promised Abraham and Abraham kept hoping. Abraham kept believing. You and I got to keep hoping. You and I got to keep hope. Hope is alive. Hope is not dead. Amen. Amen. Jesus Christ is alive. And this thing, and we're hoping in him because he is our hope of glory. Amen? Amen. So I encourage everyone, don't lose hope in this season. Don't let go of your hope. Know who your hope lies within. Know that Jesus Christ is your hope of glory. And what he promised, just as he promised Abraham, what he promised you and I, is going to come to fruition. It's going to come to pass. It's going to manifest. And so just watch and see. And don't join in with everybody else that may be feeling hopeless. Help them. Give them some hope. Tell them who you're hoping in. And tell them what the word of God has promised you. As this month he said, yes, you may. 
it's ours. We can possess it. So I just encourage everyone. Do anyone have any questions or comments about what I uh, brought? I know we have people still on the line. Praise God for you. I know that our time is almost up. But do anybody have any questions or comments about what the topic tonight? Amen. So we just thank you. We're going to go ahead and close. Father God, we just thank you for your word. I pray that your word didn't fall on, um, on stony hearts, but I pray that it fell on your hearts of your people, that it that can make it applicable, Lord God, that they'll go out and share the, the word, the good news, Lord God. They'll keep hope, Lord God. Keep hoping in what you promised them. For you, your word says that you're not slack concerning your promise, that your promises are yes and amen, Lord God. So we thank you now that we'll continue to hope just as Abraham did. We'll continue to believe. We'll continue to trust, Lord God. I thank you now that our trust and our faith and our belief in your word and your and you it will be like never before, Lord God. I thank you now, Lord. We can believe what people feel that is, is not going to happen. We know that it's going to turn around for our good. That you're turning around. You're putting it all back together. And you're redeeming the time. Thank you now, oh God, for your word and your people, Lord God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.